Hi, my name is Mary Ann Borge. I'm a naturalist here at Bowman's Hill Wildflower Preserve, and today we're going to talk about Indian hemp and some of its family members. Uh, this is Indian hemp. It's uh, also called dog bane. It's called dog bane because it has um, toxins in it. And that's a defense mechanism of this plant. The plant has evolved to try to um, have protection for itself so that it can bloom and reproduce and nobody's going to eat it to the ground because it's kind of toxic. Um, and that works for most critters, but not necessarily for insects. It works very well for mammals, but there are many insects that have evolved to um, find a way around it. Um, in fact, there's a beetle called the dogbane beetle that specializes on the, the dog banes of which Indian hemp is one. Um, this is actually a really important nectar plant in early summer. It typically starts to bloom uh, in mid-June and blooms well into July. And um, there's not always that much blooming at that time. The flowers are small, but they're actually visited by many different insects. Lots, lots of different kinds of bees, butterflies, wasps, flies, beetles, all of whom are good pollinators are visiting this plant. And um, among the insects that um, utilize the plant tissue, the leaves and other parts of the plant, in addition to the dog bane beetle, the snowberry clearwing moth, which is one of those cute little moths that look a lot like a hummingbird, the caterpillars use this. Some of the flowers here have already been pollinated and we can see the fruit capsules that are developing. The fruit capsules are always in twos and they start out as green and as they ripen in into the winter, they turn sort of a woody brown color. They're follicles and they will eventually open on one side, splitting open to release masses of seeds that have fluffy white stuff called pappas attached to them to help the seeds spread through the wind. Um, it's interesting that they always have pairs of fruit capsules or follicles. I'm seeing a little soldier beetle here visiting the plant. Um, is that the reason they have two fruit capsules typically together? is that each flower, teeny as it is, has two ovaries. And when they're both, the uh, ovules are fertilized, we get a pair of fruit capsules. So that's kind of cool. Um, let me explain the other common name. Indian hemp is the name given to this plant because the, um, the stems have fibers in them that can be used for um, making cordage, um, for making baskets. And they're also actually used by birds to help make their nests. Um, yellow warblers and orioles are among the birds that utilize the inside fibers, the fibers in the stems, to help build their nests. So this plant really has a lot of value, both for pollinators, for some of the insects that like to eat leaf tissue, although, again, the toxins in the plant are pretty effective at discouraging mammals. So if you're concerned about deer, deer won't eat it. Um, and it's also beneficial uh, for other critters as well. Now, interestingly, we're also going to talk about some of its relatives. Um, this one is swamp milkweed, and don't be put off by the name. It doesn't have to be in a swamp. It does like moist soil, but it's not. Um, it's pretty tolerant of drier soils as well. And um, it's just beginning to bloom. These flowers will attract all kinds of pollinators. They'll attract bumblebees, there was a honeybee over there a second ago. Um, it'll, they'll attract wasps, they'll attract butterflies. Many different insects visit these flowers for nectar because their, their nectar is uh, pretty copious. They have lots of nectar. Um, not every insect, however, is a good pollinator for the milkweeds. And that's because of the structure of the flowers. Um, the flower structures are they have little hoods. Um, there are little um, slots along the side where the reproductive parts of the flower are tucked away. And what's, uh, what's required for, to be a good pollinator is somebody who always likes to stick their feet in the little slots where the reproductive parts are and who is um, hefty enough, strong enough to be able to pull their feet, their legs back out. So bumblebees fit that bill. Um, some of the other smaller insects, like even honeybees, aren't necessarily um, strong enough to be able to do that. You might see occasionally a honeybee or a butterfly that may have gotten its foot stuck in there and can't get out. They can actually um, die 
from uh, being stuck there. They can't get out again. Um, the pollen is actually packaged in these little saddlebag like things called pollinia. And as the bee or other critter pulls its bee back out of the sides of the flower where they're stored, um, they'll be hanging from the feet, its feet. And again, bumblebees tend to handle flowers pretty consistently. So when they um, visit another flower, hopefully on a separate plant so that we get a little cross-pollination, they'll be tucking their feet in the same place and the female reproductive parts are also there, so pollination can occur. Um, when pollination does occur, we'll see some fruit capsules developing. It's a little early for the fruit capsules to be developing on the swamp milkweed because it's just started to bloom. Um, of the three milkweed species that I'm going to talk about today, this one is the latest to bloom. It starts to bloom maybe early July, mid-July, and well into August. Um, so this one hasn't developed its fruit capsules yet. Um, we'll go take a look at two other milkweed species, butterfly weed and common milkweed. Common milkweed, uh, you may see the resemblance to its family member, the Indian hemp that we just saw earlier. Basically, they have simple leaves um, that don't have any toothing around the ends, uh, around the edges. They also have a very pronounced midrib. But this is a bigger, hardier looking plant. Um, but there is a somewhat of a family resemblance. Um, the milkweeds, common milkweed, is, a, is the first of the three milkweeds that we're talking about today to bloom. Typically, this begins to bloom in June, and as you can see, it's just about finished now. Um, Usually, or when the flowers are fresh, they'll be in a pretty round ball. They're very fragrant. They attract lots of different insects to come visit them for nectar. And the milkweeds, as you may recall, or as you may know, are the food plant for the caterpillars of monarch butterflies. So monarchs are probably the, the insect that has become most famous uh, for its relationship or dependency on plants. Um, milkweeds are the plants that monarch butterflies depend on. The butterflies themselves can drink nectar from many different species of plants. They're not picky. But the caterpillars can only eat the leaves of the milkweeds. And it's um, sort of the, the ultimate attempt to get around the toxins that the milkweeds produce to prevent themselves from being eaten by herbivores. Um, monarchs and some other insects that you may see visiting milkweeds as well have evolved to be able to not just tolerate those toxins but sequester them in their bodies um, making the insects unpalatable to critters that would like to eat them. For example, birds. Birds love to eat caterpillars. It's a really important source of their diet, but the toxins in the milkweeds make the insects that eat milkweeds unpalatable to critters that would like to eat them, like birds. So it helps to protect the insects. And it's such a successful strategy on the part of the insects that they um, advertise themselves. They're like, hey, I don't even have to hide. They're orange and black, they're showy, they're bright, saying, don't, try, don't even think about trying to eat me, you will be sorry. Um, the caterpillars are also pretty bright and showy as well, yellow and black and white striped. Um, so this is common milkweed, just about finished blooming, but it, because of that, it's far enough along that we can see some of its fruit capsules beginning to develop as well. Those fruit capsules aren't ripe yet, they're gonna get bigger. They'll um, eventually, in winter, split open to release their seeds. So there are actually two species of insects. Both are true bugs, the large milkweed bug and the small milkweed bug, that um, primarily eat the seeds of the milkweeds, common milkweed. They also will eat the seeds of dog bangs as well, including the Indian hemp that we saw a few minutes ago. Um, so you'll see them mostly on the seed pods, on the fruit capsules that are developing as they get a little bit more mature. So um, they um, emit juices into the seed pods to make the uh, seed pods palatable for, uh, for their own diets. And I was just reading that um, the seeds actually have three times the toxins that the leaves do. So those milkweed seed bugs have uh, evolved to be able to tolerate some pretty hefty toxins. There's also um, a red milkweed beetle that um, feeds on the leaves of the milkweeds. And in fact, I see some evidence here, some of the upper leaves. Their tendency in eating is to bite through the midrib of a leaf, which stops the, the um, latex 
toxic juices from going to the sap, from going to the tips of the leaves, which makes the leaves more pal palatable for them to eat. Um, and all of these insects, the milkweed bugs, the red milkweed beetle that feeds on the leaves, um, again, the, the um, strategy that they've evolved to, to eat the milkweeds, the toxins from the milkweeds give them protection from predators and they advertise the fact that they're kind of toxic by having really bright showy warning colors, the red and black coloration. So this is the third species of milkweed that I wanted to talk to you about today. This is butterfly weed or sometimes called butterfly milkweed, um, which is just a gorgeous plant, beautiful orange flowers, and you can see that it's a magnet currently for several bumblebees who are busy working those flowers. I can see um, at least there's a couple of females over there. You can see um, pollen uh, on their legs. Um, it's also a, just a magnet for butterflies. At the moment we're seeing bees. We saw a pearl crescent a little bit earlier. I've often seen you know multiple um, butterflies of different species on one plant at the same time. This one is sort of uh, the middle of the three that we're looking at in terms of its bloom period. It starts to bloom a little bit later than common milkweed, probably towards the end of June, and you'll see it blooming into, well, throughout July and probably into early August. Um, but another fabulous uh, plant for all kinds of pollinators. The monarch butterflies will utilize all three of these species as caterpillar food. By the way, they do not, um, it's, there's speculation that they may be able to use Indian hemp, but there really isn't any documentation that they can use the dog bones, uh, of which Indian hemp is one, the monarchs um, as caterpillar for three. This one has slightly less toxins than the others do, um, but it's still not that uh, appealing to herbivores. So thanks for listening today, and if you enjoyed this, I hope you like and share it on Facebook so that other people can learn about these great plants too.